Welcome to the DVD Shelf Movie Reviews, where movies are celebrated, not incinerated. This guy here, he's our man. All grown up and going nowhere. Although he's a pretty scholarly cat, he never got much of a formal education. For the most part, he's lived in shit neighborhoods, held shit jobs, and is now knee deep into a disastrous second marriage. So if you're the kind of person looking for romance or escapism or some fantasy figure to save the day, guess what? You got the wrong movie. In this day and age we live in, comic book movies have become one of the most go-to genres of filmmaking. But that's because it's been one of the most successful. And when you think of the comic book movies from the past decade or so that remain loyal to their source material, which ones come to mind first? Batman? Spider-Man? X-Men? American Splendor? What are you talking about? I'm David Rose, your host of the DVD Shelf Movie Reviews, and, uh, well, to get in the comic book spirit today, we should probably make a couple changes around here. Oh, jeez! Oh. That's more like it. How can I out with that thing? In today's episode, we'll be looking at the 2003 film American Splendor, starring Paul Giamatti as the one and only Harvey P. Carr, the legendary underground comic book writer and music critic from Cleveland, Ohio. And yes, you can easily put this film pretty high on the list of comic book movies that are truly faithful to the source material. So much so, that this film co-stars the real-life Harvey P. Carr. This movie gracefully goes back and forth between a charming biographical dramedy and well-shot documentary-style interviews featuring the film's real-life counterparts, and they're connected with animation and graphics that make you feel like you've stepped right into the pages of one of Harvey P. Carr's famous comic book stories. First, we'll take a brief look at the backstory of Harvey P. Carr and what led him to write down his life in comic book form. We'll look at the film these books inspired, then we'll look at the film's DVD and bonus features. And the best part is that I'll be able to utilize footage from the film to help me tell the real-life story of Harvey, since it comes that close. For the most part. Then, as always, I'll give my final recommendation of the film using this rating scale, ranging from one disc being just downloaded, all the way up to five discs being a must-own movie. So now, from off the streets of Cleveland comes American Splendor. Directed by Robert Pulcini and Sherry Springer Berman, and starring Paul Giamatti, Hope Davis, Judah Friedlander, James Urbaniak, and Harvey Picar as himself. The film was released by HBO Films and Fine Line Features on August 15, 2003, and the DVD was released on February 3, 2004. Look, before we get started with any of this, you might as well know right off the bat I had a vasectomy. Born in Cleveland, Ohio to a pair of Polish immigrants in 1939, young Harvey Picar enjoyed reading superhero comic books. But as he grew up, he just got bored of reading them calling them formulaic and would wonder as to why comic books never bothered to step outside the realms of superheroes, fantasy, and science fiction. In 1962, a 23-year-old Harvey P. Carr met 19-year-old Philadelphia native and young artist Robert Crum. Crum had moved from Philadelphia to Cleveland to work at the American Greeting Card Company. P. Carr and Crum hit it off really quick with their mutual passion for jazz music. Crum had shown Harvey some of his sketchbooks and drawings he loved to do on the side, and Harvey was fascinated by not only Crum's unique drawing style, but also the sense of humor and genuine honesty behind Crum's creations. However, Crum would soon move out to San Francisco to take part in the major counterculture movement occurring in the late 1960s. Crum's work would circulate around underground newspapers, and he would self-publish his own comic books. Robert Crum has since become known as one of the founding fathers of the world of independent underground comic books. He was the main subject of the 1994 documentary, Crumb. Robert Crumb would occasionally return to Cleveland to pay Harvey visits and to be treated as a celebrity by the locals. Many years would pass. Harvey Picard had been married and divorced and was in the middle of a failing second marriage and was working as a file clerk in Cleveland's Veterans Administration Hospital. His life was looking extremely bleak by this point, and needless to say, he wasn't happy about it. But not much outside of his love for jazz music and his extensive collection of jazz records ever did make Harvey truly happy. However, he never forgot the drawings his friend Robert Crumb showed him all those years ago, and by this point, Crumb had this pseudo-celebrity status and was now commonly referred to as simply R. Crumb. As time went on, Harvey came to the realization that he too wanted to leave some sort of imprint on the world, much like his friend Robert Crumb. Harvey had since become known around Cleveland as a published jazz music critic, 
and while Crumb had returned to Cleveland to visit in the mid-70s, it was at that time that Harvey showed Crumb some ideas for comic book stories. Harvey would simply take all the shit he went through over the course of a day or even his life, filtered it all through his unique perspective, and laid it all in front of Crumb in the form of rough stick figure drawings. You turn yourself into a comic hero. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorta, of, yeah, but you know, there's no idealized shit. You know, there's no phony bullshit. This is the real thing, man. You know, ordinary life is pretty complex stuff. These are really good. Really, you think so? Yeah, this is great stuff. I dig it. <laughs> Can I take them home and illustrate them? Oh, man! <coughs> You'd really do that for me, man? <coughs> oh, man, that would be great because I can't even draw a straight line, Bob. Crumb was excited by Harvey's ideas for an unconventional autobiographical comic book and offered to illustrate and publish the first issue of what would later be titled American Splendor. The first issue was published in 1976 with Crumb and several other illustrators contributing artwork. Harvey continued to self-publish a new issue of American Splendor about once a year, so he never left his humble file clerk job. The reoccurring themes of the comics would mainly focus on Harvey's relationships with his friends, family, and co-workers, but he would also write stories about other stresses in his life like his health, money, and car troubles. By 1986, Harvey's rising fame had caught the attention of David Letterman, who invited him to his late-night talk show. Picar appeared on David Letterman's show an additional seven times throughout the late 80s, sometimes being pretty controversial. This is not it the is, place to say it. And if you want to continue if talking I, about look, this, Dave, go somewhere here. else, because look, we're not going to talk I'm, about it on the Dave, show. I signed, Harvey, one, no, no, Harvey, Harvey, no, no, Harvey, one, you're TV, wrong. By the way. What you're Harvey would openly document these late-night appearances in the American Splendor comic books. But you come because you like being with me, don't you? I don't even know you, man. <laughs> In the early 90s, Harvey was diagnosed with lymphoma. He, along with his now third wife, Joyce Brobner, decided to collaborate on a one-shot graphic novel called Our Cancer Year, illustrated by cartoonist Frank Steck, which documented Harvey's struggle and ultimate win against the cancer, keeping it in the same style and tone as the American Splendor books. It was published in 1994 and won the 1995 Harvey Award for Best Graphic Novel. Once Harvey had been diagnosed with the cancer, he stopped self-publishing American Splendor. He did, however, continue to write issues during the remainder of the 1990s and into the 2000s, but these new issues were published by Dark Horse Comics. In 2001, Harvey retired from his file clerk job at the Veterans Hospital. His retirement party was filmed and is shown towards the end of the movie. Throughout the 80s and early 90s, three separate stage productions were produced based on the American Splendor stories. The third of these productions ran from 1990 to 91 in Los Angeles, and starred the voice of Homer Simpson himself, Dan Castellaneta, in the role of Harvey Picar. Don't! This particular stage version also became the most influential for the narrative of the feature film. If you think reading comics about your life seems strange, try watching a play about it. God only knows how I'll feel when I see this movie. In 2003, documentary filmmaking team Robert Polcini and Sherry Springer Berman directed the film version of American Splendor and shot it completely on location in and around Cleveland, Ohio. And to say the film stuck very close to Harvey's life and the stories he wrote is no exaggeration. So much so that summarizing the movie would be completely redundant to what I've already covered. Now I am aware certain creative liberties had to be taken, but what biographical movie doesn't do that? But despite that, it ultimately comes off as an authentically true-to-life story and follows Harvey's, at least documented, life pretty close. One scene in particular the movie does make up is Harvey and Robert Crumb meeting at a garage sale. That never happened. This movie is way more than just your standard biopic or comic book film. It's a bit of both, but it remains fully self-aware that it is a film, making it a completely unique way of telling a person's story. For instance, at the beginning of the film, we see Paul Giamatti established in the role of Harvey. The film's opening credits feature some of Robert Crumb's drawings of Harvey, indicating that, like the American Splendor books, this movie is merely another artist's interpretation of the real Harvey Picard. That notion is pushed even further by the numerous appearances of the real Harvey and seeing him in scenes interacting with the film's actors. 
What's also cool is that whenever Harvey appears on television throughout the movie, they don't simply recreate the David Letterman appearances with Paul Giamatti. What they do is cut to actual archival footage of the real Harvey talking to the real David Letterman. This and many other examples of blending fiction and reality are what make this film such a true embodiment of the American Splendor comic books. <laughs> Megalomaniac. After the film's release, it won many film festival awards and was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay. It was even being hailed as a modern-day Annie Hall. That same year, Harvey P. Carr wrote a brand new American Splendor graphic novel, Our Movie Year, documenting his take on the positive reactions to the film. This book is referenced at the end of the movie. Following the release and overwhelmingly positive reception of the film, the DC Comics offshoot company Vertigo acquired the publishing rights for American Splendor. Harvey P. Carr wrote eight more issues of American Splendor under this new deal from 2006 to 2008. The movie led to a new generation being exposed to his work, resulting in Harvey collaborating with other writers and artists for several one-off projects and even the beginning stages of translating Harvey's past works into online comics and magazines. Sadly though, Harvey was later diagnosed with cancer for the third time in his life. In the early morning hours of July 12, 2010, Harvey's wife Joyce found Harvey dead in their home after accidentally overdosing on antidepressants. He was 70 years old. Cleveland lost a great icon that day, but his work will never be forgotten, mainly due to its ability to turn the mundane into the funny and fascinating, an art form that was well ahead of its time. If you look at some of today's popular outlets, such as reality TV or office-based comedies, they tend to hone in on the more boring issues of life and elevate them into full-blown catastrophes. Seinfeld alone spent nine seasons doing just that. Harvey P. Carr himself has been quoted about American Splendor saying that it's a series of day-to-day -day activities that have more influence on a person than any spectacular or traumatic events. It's the 99% of life that nobody ever writes about. So here we have the DVD for American Splendor. The main menu has a real comic book feel to it with the real Harvey P. Carr out for a stroll. The special features include a feature-length audio commentary by members of the film's cast and crew, the featurette Road to Splendor, which documents Harvey and Joyce's journey from the film's first showing at the Sundance Film Festival all the way to the film's L.A. premiere, a song track from the American Splendor theme performed by Aton Mursky, and the film's theatrical trailer. If you insert the disc into your DVD-ROM, you can find desktop wallpapers, buddy icons, and other little downloads. But since I have an older copy of the DVD, I can't guarantee that these DVD-ROM features were kept intact on later prints. Now also hidden on the disc are little Easter eggs. Now if you're not familiar with Easter eggs, they're little clips or surprises found on the DVD that you probably couldn't find unless you knew to look for them. And there are actually quite a few on this disc that are short little one to two minute behind the scenes looks at the film. It's just strange that they wanted to hide so many things on a disc that only has a handful of special features in the first place. So what more could possibly be said about this film? If you've never heard of Harvey P. Carr, which I suppose now you have, I've really only scratched the surface. Whether you're familiar with him or not, this film does an amazing job at using the guy's real and authentic style of work as a means of introducing or reintroducing you to the man behind it. And with the great story, performances, and direction, it's certainly a love letter to an underground American legend that is sure to help keep his spirit alive for years to come. With all this, I give American Splendor a 5-disc rating. A must-own movie. Well, that about wraps things up for this episode of the DVD Shelf Movie Reviews. Make sure to head on over to happydragonpictures.com to check out more reviews, and make sure to stay tuned for more reviews coming soon. So, see you next time, but for now, this one's going back on the DVD shelf. Who is Harvey P. Carr? Thought that I could be somebody It looks like I was wrong I thought that I could make my mark But I'm afraid I've waited much too long now Where is my American splendor In a world that's cloudy and gray Where life keeps passing by me day by day My American Splendor Where is my American Splendor?
splendor Where is my American splendor Where is my American splendor